I've lived in Kerwood for the last 40 years. We're gonna go through the pros and cons. My name's Chris. This is all about living in Tampa. If you have any questions in regards to living in Tampa or have any financing questions, check out below. We'll put uh, contact information. Love to talk to you or shoot me an email, text, we can schedule a call. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, I figured since I've lived here for the last 40 years, we'll just go through the cons first because there's gonna be fewer cons, um, being that's why I, I picked this area to live in. Uh, as far as cons go, you know, if you're looking for an area that has uh, a lot of land, probably not gonna be the place for you. It's gonna be few and far between to find properties that have maybe an acre plus. Uh, if you want that kind of um, size property or land, that kind of, you're gonna have to move further out. Probably gonna be maybe 20 to 30, 40 minutes away. Next thing, on Northdale Mabry, traffic gets really bad during rush hour. Uh, you're talking about maybe between Stall Road and Fletcher or that vicinity. Uh, those intersections right there, or I can tell you Bush Boulevard and Dale Mabry area get really backed up. So if you gotta go to work and you're going to Dale Mabry, you gotta go to school, um, same thing on the way home. Uh, those are areas to avoid if you can, and if you can't, make sure maybe use ways or uh, you know um, some kind of map finder to give you an estimated ETA on how long it's gonna take you, because maybe if you left uh, 15 minutes earlier, it's, it's gonna help you out. Another thing to think about, if you're living in this area, uh, it is going to be a little bit louder. You're going to have uh, more traffic, uh, the, the noise of a city uh, to a certain extent, maybe a suburb is what I should say. Um, you're also going to be typically, there's a lot of flight patterns for the uh, airports. So, you know, a lot of times, a lot of neighborhoods, you're going to hear planes flying over you. So those are things that bother you, you know, that'd be a con for you. I think for me, um, I've lived um, in areas where the planes go over. I, to be honest with you, I get used to it. I haven't really noticed it to, to an extent that it bothers me. So you're not gonna find newer homes for the most part. Uh, every now and then you might see a, a subdivision pop up that you know is new construction, but for the most part, they're gonna be older homes um, unless you find one that may have been renovated or it could be a teardown. So again, they're not going to be the norm. Um, you're also going to be looking at probably buying a house that, that needs to be, you know, uh, updated. Price point's going to come into play as well because you're, you're buying a house that's in an area that's very desirable, it's very convenient. So um, that could be a negative. You know, the price point, you might be able to buy a house that's maybe 20, 30 minutes away. You get maybe uh, an extra thousand square feet for the same price or maybe even cheaper and and possibly newer. Okay, and the last thing I would say is the majority of homes uh, in this area, if it's an older home, the things that I would find negative about it would be um, ceilings are gonna be lower. Probably gonna be typically gonna be eight foot ceilings. So unless you have an open floor plan, uh, it could feel a little bit more boxy, you know, um, might feel tighter. I, I know like in Carrollwood and maybe old Carrollwood, there, there are certain areas in there that, um, you know, and again, this is going way back. People use mirrors on the walls, you know, in the dining room to give you that feeling that the, you know, the room or the area was bigger because of the low ceilings. So just my thoughts on cons. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the uh, pros about living in Carrollwood. All right, so Carrollwood's very centralized. Uh, so as far as uh, living in the area, it gives you access to getting on the interstates, expressways, beaches, the airport, um, other cities, other locations, like you know places that we've talked about, like Wesley Chapel, uh, South Tampa, West Chase, New Tampa, um, see if I miss anything, Lutes, Land Lakes, all those areas are pretty much within, I'd say between 15 minutes to 30 minutes. So uh, it's very easy to get out to those areas. Other thing, you know, for, for people that like to go shopping, um, we've got four major malls within 30 minutes of the area. So uh, to name them, uh, we've got uh, International Mall down in South Tampa, West Shore Mall, South Tampa, uh, Citrus um, Park Mall, which is uh, right here near 
uh, West Chase area. And then we've got Wiregrass Mall that's uh, in the Wesley Chapel area. All right, so the other thing that's convenient about Carrollwood, um, you're gonna have restaurants, uh, you're gonna have uh, major, you know, um, big restaurants, you're gonna have smaller restaurants that are um, hometown feel type thing. You can, in some of the subdivisions, uh, you are also gonna be able to walk to some of these areas. There's grocery stores, there's restaurants, there's gas stations. You'll also have some small shopping centers and strip malls that you can possibly walk to, <clears throat> depending on where you live in Carrollwood. Schools also are gonna be a, a big thing for some people that live in Carrollwood. There are private schools in the area. There are <clears throat> public schools as well. So if you have kids and you want them to stay close to the house or maybe it's easier, more convenient for you to you know, drop them off, uh, those are all uh, available in the Carrollwood area. Also have parks, you've got sports complexes. Uh, all these things are within, I would say 15 minutes, maybe even 10 minutes of, of the centralized Carrollwood area, which is pretty much uh, Dale Mabry and Fletcher area is where, where you're looking. So we'll throw a map up, you can check that out as well. As far as, uh, you know, keeping on with the theme of schools, uh, there are two major colleges in the area as well. You've got University of South Florida, it's a, a public university. And then you also have the University of Tampa, which is a uh, private university. So uh, again, probably about 15 to 20 minutes from uh, the Carrollwood area. You also have Hillsborough Community College which um, uh, you can provide, you know, you can get your AA there and then always transfer to one of those two schools as well. Uh, if you're into sports, you got Tampa Bay Bucks, Tampa Bay uh, Stadium, you got Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, the Bucks Stadium is about 15 minutes. Tampa Bay Lightning uh, placed in downtown Tampa at Amelie Arena and that's about 25 minutes away from Carrollwood. And then you also have a spring training camp for the New York Yankees, and that's right across the street from the Bucks Stadium. So again, about 15 minutes away. Um, I like the fact that it's uh, public water and sewer system um, is, is all taken care of uh, through the county or city, depending on where you're living. Some neighborhoods also have reclaimed water. So, you know, I've got friends that have had that before and that allows them to water the grass whenever they want, you know, outside of any kind of shortages on, on water or droughts. Um, you know, uh, usually the grass yards look a little bit better in some of those neighborhoods. You're gonna have more, uh, more mature neighborhoods, uh, trees, you know, almost like a canopy, you know, across the streets. Uh, which is nice and, and you're not going to see that in some of the uh, newer neighborhoods at least for the next you know maybe 10 years or so uh, until those those trees mature in the landscape and everything like that so uh, uber and lyft rides are easy to get um, pretty much any anywhere in carrollwood you can find uber lyft rides if you ever need them um, within probably five to eight minutes um, they're constantly going so so that's not an issue um, and then the last thing i want to talk about are Two of the major lakes, you got Lake Magdalene and you also have Lake Carroll. Lake Carroll is one of the um, nicer, um, and Lake Magdalene is too, but Lake Carroll is one of the nicest lakes in this area. Um, both lakes are, are big enough for skiing, um, hydroboarding, you know, taking your uh, jet boat out, um, jet skis, you know, different things like that. If you're into those kind of things, then um, I will say there is going to be a premium, uh, especially on Lake Carroll. Lake Magdalene as well, because it's lakefront property, but Lake Carroll is going to be the more expensive of the two areas. So hope you found some of this information useful. If there's anything that you guys need, remember contact information is below. Feel free to reach out. We'd love to talk to you and uh, we'll see you next time.